Hi, and welcome to a short demo of the result of the Simple Platformer project. This little undertaking was uh, inspired by a post on the XNA forums at the Microsoft uh, MSDN website where a uh, user was asking for code as simple as possible to implement a platformer. So um, this is the result of taking up that challenge and here I'll demonstrate the result. In another video I'll walk through the code and the classes and the algorithm. But um, to just reveal a bit of the algorithm, I have um, created code which takes a position of where an object is. In this case it's the little blue guy here, top left corner, and it takes the position of where we want to end up. So let's say I'm jumping and maybe our little blue guy wants to jump 60 pixels into the air from one update to the next and he won't be allowed to because we pass the position of where the little guy is now where he wants to go 60 pixels up and the bounding rectangle which is to say the rectangle that surrounds this little fellow and what my code does is it then looks at all the little um, positions between up to around here and whenever we move half a pixel it asks the game board here our platformer level can I move here can I move here okay yeah I can move here okay fine I'll do that can I move here can I move here and uh, slowly the little guy rises up into the air can I move here can I move here and at some point the movement controller finds out that the guy can't move anymore and movement is stopped and gravity takes over. Now gravity is implemented very simply by adding um, a downward speed all the time to the position of the little blue guy, my jumper as I call him. But since the movement controller is also looking for can I fall and finds out, no, I can't, there's something blocking. The movement controller asks the board, is there anything in uh, blocking me from falling down? And the board says, yep, this rectangle here is. As soon as we move, we found out, find out that now we are able to fall. I don't know if you noticed, but since I have rounded corners on my sprites here, we can get a peculiar situation where it looks as if he's flying. Actually he's not, but here we're probably only overlapping by a one pixel and since we have transparent corners on both sides it, it looks as if it's a glitch. It's not. What we could do to make it more graphically appealing and more realistic is to have a bounding rectangle that's slightly smaller than this dude, which is something you often do in computer games. Um, and this would have us find out that he could fall even though he was slightly on the edge of the of the platform. So that's the basis of it. The movement controller figures out where is the, the jumper, where does he want to go, breaks that movement into a lot of small pieces and if everything is okay he ends up after this call to update in the new s new place. If not then he is stopped. I've added a little refinement so that if he stopped and the movement at the point where he stopped is diagonal, then leftover movement will be carried over into either a vertical or a horizontal movement. Look at him when he falls off this platform here as and he will start sliding along. Oh, if I have enough speed he will like that. So um, I'm falling and the first couple of movements here it goes quite all right he's moving diagonally down here he around here he's stopped and whatever was left maybe three or four pixels uh, in that call to update will be turned into uh, and tried for a horizontal or a vertical movement uh, and since he was moving this direction the horizontal movement will be this way on the x-axis and this way on the y-axis and he won't be allowed to move downwards so 
he will only be able to move right until he comes to a uh, something that stops him. The same thing goes for jumping up against the wall, as you can see here. Oh. This jump, as soon as he hits the wall, the rest of the movement is uh, carried upwards. So basically, that's the algorithm. So where are you? Where do you want to go? Break it into small steps and try moving uh, half a pixel at a time whenever you hit something the bounding rectangle from the jumper and some other bounding rectangle overlaps we stop and we see if it's a diagonal movement try to carry it over into horizontal or vertical grab the code i've made sure that it uh, is according to the clean code principles as far as as i have understood them uh, robert c martin who has tried to make a set of rules where you have variables and method names that are very self-explanatory. You have as few parameters to methods as possible uh, and you have no comments because you basically take your comments to everything and you concatenate it, remove the two slashes in front and then whatever comment you had on top of your method becomes the method name. In another movie I'll walk through the code the algorithm in more detail. I hope this has been illuminating. Have a look at the code and have fun.